Hello and welcome to Tech Talks. Now, I'm Jenny Brumby, and if you're wondering why I'm speaking first today, it's because I'm going to be interviewing our wonderful commercial mentor, Rachel Gore. Hi. Hello. Hi. We're so <laughs> <seat. laughs> You've done some fantastic TED Talks over the last few weeks, and honestly, it's been inspiring um, and wonderful to watch you speaking to our local businesses and getting lots of information out of them about what they do. But you've got a really interesting story as well, haven't you, Rachel? So take us yes. back to the beginning. Yeah. Um, so, yes. Hello, everybody. We have swapped seats. Kind of like it over here. <laughs> it's a bit more uh, less intense. So I, my business is Go Your Own Way, and but it didn't always start with Go Your Own Way. It started way back in 2001, when I went to university and I studied 3D design and specialised in um, contemporary jewellery and rapidly found out when I graduated in 2005 that there's not a lot of money to be made in contemporary jewellery because it takes too long to make and a lot of galleries want sale or return um, so you're left with stock and just making it and not making any money. So I had a little bit of a, well, I'm using these materials, so I was using um, resins, rubbers, aluminiums, quite unconventional, and it was a case of, well, how can we make some more money? And I fell into meeting a couple of people who were still really good friends today, uh, a lady called Claire Driver and Harriet Smithson, and they worked for Allerdale Borough Council, and one was town centre manager and one was, like, the arts coordinator... And they don't have them anymore because the, all the arts funding are gone. And we met each other and they were like, we really like you. We've got a bit of a proposition for you. It's like, oh, God, what's coming now? Uh, they said, we want you to be our kind of first artist in residence in Workington as part of the Empty Shop scheme, first time round. So this was around maybe 2007, 2008. And we launched a project called Spring Fling, um, which was an outdoor gallery space, but we put it out to the whole community. So anybody who read the Times and Star who lived within Allerdale could apply to be part of this outdoor gallery. So we had poets, um, milliners, um, artists, story makers, all different kinds of um, creatives, I suppose. And the winners had their work um, displayed on the outside of where, if you're familiar with Workington, it's where H and HMV, H&M, Laura Ashley on that corner opposite Debenhams, or what was Debenhams. And that's where that started. So that was like project management artist in residence, the beginnings of actually, I quite like this freelance side of the because <laughs> I can make some more money. But at the same time, I've always had this side hustle where I was making and creating and selling jewellery, accessories, or whatever. Um, and then we did some workshops in Workington Town Centre where people could come in off the street and cast their own resin fridge magnets and they could make hair accessories and stuff, which was really successful because it, the people in Workington had never seen it before. And it's funny because me and my friends who I was at uni with, um, there's a lot of people working in resin now and they call themselves resin artists. And there's all these moulds available and we were like, we were making them by hand. <laughs> and we weren't known as resin artists. We were like tiny little um, wooden moulds that we had to vacuum form and stuff. So our stuff was so bespoke. But, yeah, there was a lot of late nights and sore fingers and everything from that. Did you always want to start your own business when you were younger? Did you think that's something that you always wanted to do or is it you always wanted to go to university or you wanted to be creative and then you thought, well, all of those things actually come together? I, I kind of... It was one of them typical school experiences of, right, you're in top sets for everything, you're academic, you're bright, your path is to go to university. Um, no, nobody ever mentioned an apprenticeship or anything like that to me. So, but I knew I was really, really good at sport. I was really good at art and technology. And I was like, how can I combine all these things together? Anyway, um, I was planning on going and doing design technology and sport science. Um, but then my sixth form stopped running sport science, so I couldn't do it as an A-level. 
Um, so we were back to square one and I was like, well, I want to do art, I want to do design tech. And they're like, well, but you need a third. So I did English literature. Well, I attempted to do English <laughs> literature. Love the plays, love the creativity. Not so good at writing essays, but that's another story. Um, and looked at art-based degrees. And at this point, I was thinking, well, I'm really good at making things. Not so good at technical drawing or painting. And I can hear that, I can, I can hear, well, what are you going to do as a career? You know, what's yeah. this degree going to get you? Because as parents, that's what we worry about for our children is that, and that's kind of why we push them down apprentice mm. routes, is that we want them to have the safety net. But running your own business, it's like, it's really hard. But as a parent, it's like, really, do I want to encourage my child to go into that? But by the sound of it, it's really been organic for yeah, you, hasn't it? It's, it's been a journey. Creative, but yeah. it's always been, you were destined to be on this path. I think so, because... In amongst all of this, I went, so I graduated and I did really well. And um, our tutors at uni were good at saying, we want you to be makers, we want you yeah. to work for yourselves. So they did do some um, workshops and stuff around tax, VAT. Which is important. It's yeah, the number one thing. It absolutely is. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and through the journey of kind of, freelancing and always having this side hustle, but I always had a full-time job yeah. because I, I come back from university, I was absolutely brassic and I wanted to be down in Manchester, but I didn't have any money. Yeah, and, and it's, it's hard, isn't it? Because you've got a gift, you're very good at what you do, but you have to transition over. You've got to make enough money to be able to transition over yeah. to yeah. do that full-time. And a lot of the people that we work with, with Teg is they work full time mm. because they're not in a position to do the job that they love, running their own business full time without a transition period. And it took me a long time. It didn't happen overnight. Um, I come home, skint, and my dad bought us a shed for Christmas. <laughs> so we had his and her shed, which is a running <laughs> thing. Was that because he'd had enough of you and he just wanted you out of the house? Get out of the bloody house. <laughs> um, you know, my dad was a single parent. He, I didn't have two parents giving me loads and loads of money. We didn't get a lot of help with funding at university because he, on his own, he was earning too much. And I lost my mum when I was 14. And I'm an only child, so I didn't have that... Safety net. Big safety net yeah. or big family unit that would lift me up yeah. all the time. But I've met your dad. And your dad is wonderful, so yeah, I know. I, you only need you only need one dad. <laughs> He's a legend, and um, yeah, without him, this would never have happened. And don't get us wrong, it hasn't been an easy road, as he would tell you as well. We fought like cat and dog because we're very similar. But for the t past ten years, he's been a godsend in more ways than one. Obviously, well, he's your first mentor. He and is. for a lot of startup businesses. If they're lucky enough to have very good parents, they're your first mentor. They're the ones that are going to say, yeah, go for it. What's the worst that can happen? It's better to have tried than not tried at mm. all. And my mum was like that as well because she was a teacher. Dad was a mechanical engineer in, in the end. But he, so creative? Yeah, hands-on. Both very different, though. One very logical, measure twice, cut once. My yeah. mum, <laughs> give it a go, give it a whirl. Well. Yeah. Let's just throw a bit of paint yeah. at it and see what happens. Yeah. And, uh, like I say, I always had this side hustle and went back to uni, did postgrad in teaching, so I worked within... Didn't just teach. I went to do primary teaching and ended up teaching the older ones. Never went back to the little ones. Uh, worked in third sector training, working with really hard-to-reach young people um, with Rathbone, and then ended up going back into teaching with the Deputy Ed at Whitehaven Academy, teaching creative and media studies... And at that point, I was really happy. Yeah. And then my world imploded. And 2017 was one of the worst years of my life. Um, I was made redundant. Uh, the partner I was with at the time left. I had to give up a house. And I had to find a new job. So you had to take stock of your life and take it in a Big different style. Take it in a different direction. Yeah. Uh, thankfully, the end of 2017 got better because I met Peter, <laughs> who I'm with now, now. And six years on, we're still together. Um, but it didn't get any easier because within amongst all that, I had numerous miscarriages. And the final miscarriage just before COVID was the catalyst 
that made me take stock big, big time because I fell apart. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and it was at that point, because I wasn't getting any support from my the employer at the time, I was just on sick and it was just like, oh, well, you know. Um, I decided to go full-time with the business because COVID hit. Online sales went crazy. Yeah. And a bit of a couple of shed talks with Dad and Peter and I said, I can't go back. I can't no. go back to work. And I think in, one of the things that my dad used to say to me is that you don't learn from success, you learn from failure and you learn, all right, I'm not going to do that again. Or you see the opportunity and you grasp it and think... Let's go for it. You know, definitely in COVID, you know, we, we were doing a lot of work with struggling businesses having to completely change the way that they ran their face-to-face -face yeah. business and completely against what everything that had been taught to them and trading online, something that many of those businesses hadn't ever done before. But you embraced that. And I think because you of the knowledge that you had and the creativity that you had, that was an opportunity. Yeah. So it was the door opened, locked down, people were online constantly, what can I buy? And and you went with it and, you know, you made it a really great success. Yeah, and it, it saved us because... Yeah. But it also gave you purpose. Yeah. That's the other thing about, mm. about life is purpose, isn't it? And it's really important to have a purpose in life, but especially if you've got a purpose that you love. Yeah, and I guess I always... I'm quite open about my, my journey to this point and... Um, I always am forthcoming when I work with anybody. And I'll just say, do you know what? I've overcome adversity yeah. a, a, a few times. <laughs> and I struggle on a daily basis with my mental health, and but I still get out of bed in the morning. But because I, think I can't every, not. <laughs> but, but with mental health, I think if we were all honest, at some point in our lives, we've all struggled with mental health. It's just the more people that talk about it, the more it feels accepting yeah. and that you're not different to anybody else. But mental health in business is absolutely massive. Oh, because it's insane. You, a lot of times you've worked on your own. Yeah, it's, a yeah. very, it's a very lonely place sometimes running your own business, isn't it? Oh, yeah, and definitely. Especially in COVID when we were very much alone. So, you know, being honest about it, you know, it's really important. And if I can inspire other people to be like that, then, you know, if they think, oh, I, I can't get past that that blockage or whatever, I'm like, but you can, you've just got to find it. Yeah. And You've got to dig deep, you know, yeah. People say to me, oh, Rich, you, you're one of the most resilient people I've ever met. And I said, I just don't know where it comes from. Yeah. But I've just got to keep fighting. And so from the, the dining room table go your own way, was born, but Peter was the influence behind the subject matter. And I joke, and we, we both joke, that it started with a man, a van, and an ice cream at Keswick. But, <laughs> and I, we were sat there having an ice cream on Dermot Water, and I was looking up at Cat Bells, and I was like... And then you walk around Keswick, and you see what's on offer. I was like, I can do it better than that. So what did that lead on to? Because I know the next stage in this. There's, there's, some, <laughs> award, there's some awards in there, I believe. Yeah. Um, so it led on to me developing a range of gift and homeware centred around outdoor adventures, the Lake District, travel. And it, it kind of just went boom, in a way. And, you know... People in business tell you, do one thing and do it well. Well, I was doing probably 101 things <laughs> to see what was going to be well, do well. And it's it's getting, I'm narrowing it down more now, but um, because my brain fires off in every direction from a creative point of view, I find it really hard to do one thing. Um, so, yeah, I, um, 2019, I won the back end of, won two awards. I won Jacqueline Gold, who was the founder of Ann Summers, she had um, like a women in business, women in enterprise competition on Twitter and I won that. And then a couple of months later, Theopathesis, who runs Small Business Sunday, very much through Twitter, but now on Instagram as well. Um, you could apply every week to try and win and there's thousands of people apply. Anyway, um, I think it was the end of October, November, so it was like Christmas time-ish. I won it. And that was 
that just elevated things a bit more because if you win, you then get invited to his conference every year in Birmingham and you get to meet him. So I met him and I give him some personalised map coupling. Very good. <laughs> Slide it in there while I'm there. Did it increase the revenue for your business? Did you find yeah. more traffic was coming your way? Because I could... I could um, Market. Tell people and market myself yeah. as in award-winning business. Yeah. And that year as well, I had a piece featured in the Guardian Christmas gift guide. I was in Horse and Hound, Trail Magazine, and it just went a bit yeah. crazy. But I was pushing it and I was working on the PR side of it. Um, and then it's just been this this journey and we got a new shed. <laughs> uh, so we moved house. The shed the, keeps getting yeah, the, bigger. The shed's bigger now. However, Peter built one next door, so we've got his and hers, and his is bigger, which I'm not happy about. <laughs> um, so we got a new shed and uh, a laser cutter, which at the time I was like outsourcing, and I'd, I've always wanted one. <laughs> it's like, what do you want for Christmas, laser cutter? <laughs> and uh, my dad had retired, and bless him, instead of buying himself something, he bought me an iPad Pro and a laser cutter. <laughs> so he invested in what going a man. way. Oh, he's, like I say, he's a star. I, uh, we have the joke as well, which we do when he used to do shows with us. Um, I had a, made us T-shirts that said, well, I'd say girl boss and he said apprentice. <laughs> so that was an ongoing joke and his little, um, little well, you know, I was, we swapped roles, blah, blah. But it was good patter because people yeah. were like, oh, we love the fact it's father and daughter and all the rest of it. And he helps me out daily now. Well, that was one of the things I was going to ask you is how do you handle capacity? Because, you know, I suppose it comes, you know, in streams, different right. times of the year Every month or a new product when you mm. come out with. Because there's been some new products, I think, around Workington, I believe. Localism. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um... So dad helps me out as much as he can. So does Peter, actually. And uh, at the moment, dad's rebuilding my show set up for Westmoreland Show and Fine. Taste Cumbria in September. Um, and it's all hands on deck. So Christmas time is the busiest. And in the past, I've took on young people to do my pick and packing. And they've had a bit of work experience in amongst it. And the girl who I used, Bethany, she was in a really rough place in her life and she's gone on to be a hairdresser Fab. and she credits that time with me for that little push yeah and which is wonderful and I guess that then led into working with uh, more young people for a third sector charity we were doing social impact social action projects that came to an end and then the next door neighbour copies <laughs> me into an email to you and said, no, I can't do it, but you really need to talk Yeah, to Rachel and Jenny. <laughs> so we're always looking for fantastic mentors at TEG um, and we needed a commercial mentor, but somebody that was creative, somebody that had actually done it and not just learnt, you know, out of a book. <laughs> so, yeah, I got um, an introduction and we met, didn't we? Yeah. And so how have you found, because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reverse it, so, you know, not what's Teg done for you, but how have you found? <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, but, you know, you're on the receiving end, so, you, you know, you've been with us about five months now and yeah. it's been fantastic. And the, the feedback that we've had from the businesses has been unreal, it really has. So it was... Definitely the right decision for us. But has Teg helped you? Oh, God, massively. It's helped me from a per in a personal way, as in we've touched on it before, how um, isolating it can be, being self-employed. And I was getting to the point where I need to get out of this house type thing. And this does, it gets me out, back it, out into the community and meeting small businesses, micro businesses, CICs, limited companies. But it pushes me and tests me which I love because I always love a challenge. Mm. Um, and within that, I've met some brilliant people, but it sparked loads of ideas yeah. with me as well in my business. So we going back to the localised products, um, for those who are listening outside of Cumbria, <laughs> you may or may not have heard of Cheese XL Crisps. If you haven't, Google it. If you have, you know where to get them. But I kind of poked fun at it in a novelty way, as in, and I made um, a tr Christmas tree bauble of <laughs> a packet of cheese XL crisps, and it went mental. So from that, we then 
I mean, oh, I'm going to put it on. So are you known as the Excel girl now? Yeah, I am the cheese <laughs> Excel lady. <laughs> um, so from that, made mugs, printed them ourselves, and obviously we do everything in-house as much as we can. And then, but working in Whitehaven mainly and working with um, Whitehaven people, we were talking about localised products and about how they make you unique. And I was like, why have I never done anything about a jam eater. Yeah. You uh, need to explain what a yeah, jam eater is now and get it right. <laughs> right. So <laughs> there is a very, it's not a feud at all. It's banter. It's, it's banter, isn't it? Between mainly Workington and Whitehaven. And it all centres back to uh, after the war or post war about the miners who could afford to have jam in their sandwiches. People from Whitehaven say it was the people in Workington that couldn't and vice versa. <laughs> and then Mary Park got involved. So it's like this trilogy thing of who's a jammer here. Um, so it, it's always, it, it's so local. It's other people are like, what, what, what? But it sparks a conversation. And that's the best thing about living where we live, isn't it? Is mm. that we've got a real strong, good community yeah. spirit yeah. here. A bit of laugh, you know, it, it, it it's... That's what makes us so strong here yeah. and, and supportive. And it's and then from that it went on to Uppies and Downies, which is a game played in Workington over the Easter Bank holiday weekend. And um, I made designed some mugs. And you need to Google it. Yeah. Go on YouTube and because honestly, it's... you you will if you are out of the area and do not know what we're talking about, you will be astounded to see the uppies and downies. It's been on the BBC yeah. now. We're proper getting wow. the elevation. Yeah. So I uh, designed a uppy and a downy mug, and uh, so much of the proceeds went to the um, palliative care unit yeah. at West Cumberland, who looked after my mum. Um, and there'll be more. Yeah. But they're always a talking point. And if I, put, I post them on any me social media platform, you usually get that, oh, I hate these crisps, I love these crisps, what's a jam here? And all that time, it's a rapport that I can build with customers but and you, I can snare them in. <laughs> but you see an opportunity, and that's what we try and teach as mentors to the businesses, yeah. is that you may sit up, set up a business with a certain product or a certain service, but that's not what's going to actually make you a lot, a lot of money one day. Mm -hmm. It's just the learning process of it and seeing the opportunities that quick. Has anybody else done something like this before? No, right, I need to produce it or yeah. create it or create the yeah. service behind it. So it's, you know, if you, if you are starting your own business, it's not always the first product that it's going to make you sustainable, actually. It, it could be you've got five or six before you get to that place but, where, you know, you're really making money. And that's what it's all about. Yeah, and they were a whim because yeah. my bread and butter is products around the outdoors, Lake District, the Wainwrights, do a lot of uh, OS map printing onto wood. Um, and But I, had, I felt like I needed, because I'm a Mara, <laughs> again, you'll have to look it up, um, to have some localised, yeah. and that's the, the kind of yeah. gift that Tegs gave me to realise, to expand that range, but to also advise other people. And then to me, I just see that local businesses should be ripping our arms off to get all these localised products in their retail outlets and be like, look what we're creating as a Teg family yeah. that other people who are visiting the area can take home with them. And we're ideas people, aren't we? Because oh, yeah. the amount of times you've said to me, do you know what, I came up with a good idea when I was working with somebody today. I wish I'd done it myself. Mm. So that's what you, but our, seeing their success is our success. Seeing them on the markets or them getting a contract somewhere or, you know, progressing their marketing strategies and, you know, they've, they've got thousands of followers on social media. Honestly, it, it's just awesome, isn't it? It really, really it's is. It's a feel-good factor yeah, that comes in. Yeah, because you're part of their journey and that, you know, it, it it sounds corny, but it doesn't feel like a job. No. It's just you're excited to get up every day to, to help more people. And to see where it goes, and like you say, it's part of being your own boss is who knows what comes next. But the, oh, that's anything the is, though. Yeah, anything is a possibility. Just give it a go. Yeah. You know, what age? It doesn't matter. You know, we the youngest person that I've worked with is 12 years old and he's on his second, possibly third business now. So it's it, it doesn't matter what age you are. 
what disability you have. As long as you have somebody there that's cheering you along on your journey, then you're going to succeed, whether it's giving you the purpose or actually, you know, giving you some money because, yeah. you know, that's what we need as well. Well, we like our money. We like our holidays. Yeah. And I guess a, a milestone for me last year was I told my dad how much I'd made. And he was like, bloody hell. <laughs> I said I've made more than I would ever would when I was teaching. Yeah. And I think for my dad to realise that after all that hard work, not that we're all... You're achieving. Yeah, it's working. Yeah. Um, so the gamble paid off yeah. and tragedy became a success in yeah. a way. Well, that's, that was my next question. Highs and lows. <laughs> <laughs> lots, lots, of, <laughs> lots of lows. I yeah. hope that you're really starting to hit some highs now. I'm getting there. Like I say, it's, it's hard um, because in amongst all this, we found out I can't have any children and that is something that I've got to deal with every day and it's really tough. And obviously we're in a climate now that's uncertain and our mortgage will go up next year and we're, we're both self-employed now. Um, so there's, there's things to tackle every single day and I guess it's that choice of sink or swim and for, I never thought I was stubborn but I, I think I am <laughs> <laughs> because I won't give up no, good um and I think that's part of it because I've explained to professionals over the years I'm like look I don't get any sick pay I don't get any you got no safety net come in and no. cover for us if I'm poorly or whatever um so as long as my my hands are working, my head's all right, I can make. But it, you've got to have that in you or for somebody to instil it into you, that you've got to hustle. Yeah. You've got to hustle to make money. Well, you've, you've got, got to have drive, drive, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, you've got to have drive. You've got to seize the opportunities and make the best of them. Yeah. And I think I'm coming to realise it now when people say to you, oh, so what do you do? And I'm like... But I don't just do one thing. Juggle jelly. <laughs> <laughs> don't just do one thing. But I can do a lot of different things and I can do them well. And uh, people say, oh, what are, you know, in the arty world, what about your practice? What's the main thing? And I'll always say it's about the journey of unlocking other people's creativity yeah. and that everybody's like an onion. You've just got to peel the layers back to find out what's going on inside. So if you were giving somebody advice, what <laughs> would you give them? In a couple of sentences, because it could go on and yeah. on with our Rachel. Um, if you've got an idea, never think it's a stupid one. Absolutely. Talk to somebody about it. Come and find us. Um, and don't give up. Yeah. And I think that's it, it, it is hard and, you know... You've just got to roll with the punches. And if you're in a job or a lifestyle that you're not happy with, you don't have to be, no. you don't have to stay in that position no. forever. Because this is about enjoyment, isn't it? Yeah. You know, we found that in lockdown, there was a, a high volume of people came to us in lockdown because they weren't happy with the job they were doing. You know, it gives them the time to stop at home and go, I really hate the job mm -hmm. that I'm doing and I'm really creative, but I love baking or I love making or I found something better to do. How do I get that to a position where I'm going to make money from it? Mm -hmm. and, and I think you just got to go for it. There is plenty of support out there, not just us, but preferably us. Yeah, um, to us. <laughs> and what we do is free and there's no time limit that we, you know, we can help you. But do what makes you happy because you've just got one life, haven't you? Yeah, and that, that's what we've got to stick to. You don't get a second chance. No. It's not a dress rehearsal and all them other cliches. Um, but no, go for it. You've got to give it a try. Otherwise, you'll live the rest of your life regretting it. Well, thank you very much, <laughs> Rachel. Um, we look forward to carry on working with you in the future because I think this partnership has been amazing and I know the feedback from our, our businesses has been. So thank you very much. Thank you. It's for everything that you're doing for us. Quite nice to sit on the other side of the table. <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to find out more about my business, because I've got to get a little plug in here, my um, business is called Go Your Own Way Apparel. I don't usually use the apparel bit, but... 
Um, it's there. And so it's all the W's, G-Y-O-W.org.uk. And then if you do the usual on socials, you'll find me under Go Your Own Way Apparel on all the popular ones. But thank you very much, Jenny. It's been grand. And thank you very much for watching. Um, we have round about, I think, 11 Tech Talk vlogcasts, so please watch them all. There's some absolutely amazing videos of amazing local business people. But if you would like more information about what we do, www.teguk.co.uk. Thank you. Bye now. A Liquid Studios production.